Hey guys, so I showed you how to make a form in React just using no other libraries, just the basics. And it looks like this, you can type stuff and it'll pop up down here below. And I showed you how to connect these two together so you see what you see here, down here. And what I want to do now is show you how you can add material design to this form so it looks a little bit nicer and just go from there. So we're going to follow along with the installation of Material UI. We need to install the library and then add this inject half event plugin. So here's the code here. I'm going to pop over to the command line, shut down the server, and start installing stuff. So the first thing we need is Material UI, but we also need this React Tap plugin because the Material UI actually uses that. And then when they're done with that, we can actually just get started. So we actually need to go to our, right here, our main page. I guess we should just do app.js. No. That's fine. This is, yeah, actually we should do it in our app because this is where our form's at. We need to add a material UI, just a little provider. So copy this I'm going to just paste it in here and I'm going to separate split those um, and then we're going to wrap our component like that and we also need to make sure we call this so I'm going to copy that and get rid of the comment put that below our imports okay so like it said we need to wrap our whole thing in this mu theme provider and then our app can actually use the nice material UI components that they have all right all right so now anywhere in our application now as long as it's between these two tags we can use material UI things so now in our form we can use material UI so I'm going to go to the component section here and I can go to fields text field in particular is what we want and the real reason I want to start doing material UI is I want to show you guys how to handle errors so they have these nice error fields which we'll be using later but for now I, I really like I don't like it popping up as much I like like this this is my favorite one where it's fixed so we're gonna copy fixed floating label text that's the one I want so actually before we copy that, we want to copy the import too. So we're importing our text field, and now we're going to copy. And then we wanted the fixed floating. So paste that guy in. Can get rid of that? Okay. So I'm going to copy the name here. Hint text. I'm going to put first name, and we'll just put first name for both of those. Um, and we can get rid of that same thing. And then value and on change we'll grab. Now, I believe uh, text field, we can actually, at the bottom of this page, it'll tell us what the props are. I believe there's an on change. Yeah. And cool. It has the event and the new value. I believe the event should also have the value as well. If not, we can change it if there's a problem. But now we can just copy this all the way down. So now I'm going to have a last name here. And then we can get rid of that last name, hint text. And I actually want to, real quick, get rid of this. Just want to come over here, start the server. So npm start, and make sure we actually see the material design. Make sure we have no errors before we go and change everything. So this looks like it's taking a second for the server to load up. When that's done, we should see our field, and we do. So I can start typing, Bob, and cool. Notice how it integrates quite nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to username email and all the rest of them. 
That way we can have the whole form looking nice. So the username, username, and you guys can change the hint text and whatnot if you want to give it a different description. Um, there we go, username, and we can get rid of that. Same thing with email. And by the way, you can use, uh, you can set the type of that, type to email if you want to. I'm not going to, but it actually provides a little bit more uh, restriction on what the user can type. All right, so you email here, and then last but not least, our password. And I believe we can just put type password and it will um, go ahead and hide it when we're typing. Oops, not hide password. Okay, so now we have all those fields popped over to material design. So we have username, cool. So first name, last name, uh, username, email, password. And it looks like password doesn't pop up, but if we go to material, we don't need that anymore. At the bottom here, it'll show us how we can tell it we want to hide it. Um, we down here, style, type specifies, such as password. Oh, I didn't set the type to password. That's why. Now, let's see if password, make sure password is blocked here. Cool, it is. And now I want to actually get a nice button as well. So let's come over here to buttons. Flat button. We get a raised button. I think raised button looks nice. Let's do copy that. And uh, you'll notice with uh, material design or material UI, they have you importing things like this as opposed to doing something like this, having like the text field and the raised button from material UI, right? I mean, I didn't spell out. Oops. I didn't spell out text field and raise button here, but if we want, we, we could do it like this too, but this is actually more efficient. So that's why you'll see the material design um, documentation doing it like that. But okay, let's add our raise button down here. So raise button, and let's see how they do it. So raise button, you can add a label and a style. Label is primary. For us, we're gonna say submit, and we're gonna say tr primary is true. We don't need any style, but we do want an on click. So let's copy that over here. Oops, and we actually need to copy like that, okay. So now we have our on click, and then we're saying we want a primary button, and we with the text is gonna be submit. And cool. Now we see our stuff. We can type, we can hit submit, clear the form. Cool. So now we have material design all added to our form. And what I'm going to be showing you guys in the next video is how you can actually make requests to a server. So when I submit this, maybe I submit to a server to create a new user. And then if there's any errors, we can actually, like I was showing you guys earlier, pop up this, some red text, and we can be like, hey, there's a required field. Like if I'm only typing this, we don't want them to leave all these fields blank. We can, you know, tell them, hey, those fields are blank. So that is it for this video, guys. Coming up soon, we will be adding uh, basically error validation to our form. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.